I just returned home from Napa Valley yesterday. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing eight Napa Valley wines that I'm buying now. And by now, I mean it, as I purchased more than half of these wines just this week. Located high atop Mount Vitor, Mayakamas Vineyards has 475 acres of property, but only 52 acres are planted to vine. These vineyards are planted at elevations ranging from 1,800 feet to 2,400 feet above sea level. In addition, Mayakamas is located fairly close to San Pablo Bay, and thus receives some cooling influences from those breezes. In fact, just a couple days ago, I was riding an ATV through the vineyard during my tour of the estate, and there were actually snow flurries while I was there. That's how cool it can get sometimes. This is very much a classic Napa producer. Even though they had an ownership change a few years ago, they're still making wine in the exact same way they've made it since the 1950s. And wine has been made on this property for an impressive 125 years, which is very old for Napa standards. Mayakamas embraces organic principles as well, and when I was there I even saw a herd of sheep that were tending to the cover crops and eating some of the weeds on the property. The first top Napa Valley wine that I'm buying now is the Mayakamas Chardonnay. The 2020 Mayakamas Chardonnay sells for an extremely reasonable $50 per bottle. This is about the same amount, if not even a little bit less, than some Napa Valley Sauvignon Blancs are selling for these days. So certainly an excellent value. For those of you who don't like buttery Chardonnays, this is definitely an intriguing option for you. Mayakamas suppresses malolactic fermentation, and so you're going to have higher acidity with this wine, as malolactic fermentation can reduce acidity, and you're also not going to have those buttery flavors that many people detest. The buttery flavors are a byproduct of the malolactic fermentation, and so you won't have those flavors and aromas with this wine. In addition, for those of you who hate too much new oak influence in your Chardonnay, this is definitely a Chardonnay for you to look into as well, as the vast majority of the oak used for the Mayakama Chardonnay maturation is neutral. At least 90% is neutral. This is a wine with tremendous freshness and acidity that's capable of aging for an extended period of time in your cellar. In fact, during my visit, I had the 2010 Chardonnay, which was in very much the same style as the 2020 Chardonnay, but it had plenty of life left and was fresh and vibrant. I also tasted the 1999 Mayakama Chardonnay, and that one was even more impressive. Definitely plenty of life left on that one as well, and there's no hurry to drink it, but it's certainly in a great place right now as well. So for $50 a bottle, you can't go wrong with the Mayakama Chardonnay. I've had many viewers on this channel tell me that they dislike or they avoid altogether Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon because they think that they're all too sweet and syrupy. I can assure you, however, that that's not the case with a number of the wines that I'll be discussing this video, and in particular with a Mayakamas Cabernet Sauvignon. The style of Napa Valley Cabernet that's too sweet and that can have some cloying sweetness is achieved by allowing the grapes to stay on the vines for an extended period of time in the fall and become almost raisin-like. Mayakamas, however, harvest their fruit very early in the season, and this results in a Cabernet Sauvignon that has tremendous freshness and balance. This wine is definitely not too sweet at all, and I suspect that many of those who say that they dislike Napa Valley Cabernet because it's too sweet would very much appreciate the Mayakamas Cabernet Sauvignon. Once the Mayakamas Cabernet Sauvignon has been harvested and fermented, it matures in neutral oak for an impressive 32 months. For the first 20 months, the wine matures in very large oak casks that are neutral, and after that it spends about a year in smaller oak barrels that are also neutral, and these barrels range in size from 225 liters to around 500 liters. Because Mayakamas uses neutral oak, you don't have a lot of oak influence with this Cabernet Sauvignon, and so you're not going to have a lot of flavors and aromas such as vanilla, coffee, clove, and cocoa, and so forth. Instead, you'll have a wonderfully pure expression of classic Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon, one that's extremely age-worthy and very impressive. And this Cabernet Sauvignon sells for around $150 per bottle. This is another extremely age-worthy wine. When I was at the winery a couple days ago, I had the opportunity to taste the 2003 Mayakamas Cabernet Sauvignon. This impressive wine was aging extremely gracefully. It was very youthful, and it still had plenty of fruit left 
but yet it was still fresh and well-balanced as well. Following graduation, Thomas Rivers Brown got in his Honda and drove all the way from the East Coast to Napa Valley, California. He then slept in his friend's closet and began going door to door looking for work at wineries. Now, Thomas Rivers Brown, or TRB, consults for more than 40 wineries in Napa Valley and is widely regarded as one of the top winemakers in Napa Valley. While many of the wines that are produced by TRB command hefty price tags, the most cost-effective way to get wines that he produces is by buying them directly from his winery, Rivers Marie. The name Rivers Marie was formed by combining the middle names of Thomas Rivers Brown and his wife. This winery has been making outstanding Cabernet Sauvignon as well as Pinot Noir and Chardonnay for around two decades now. For that reason, another top Napa Valley wine that I'm buying is the Rivers Marie Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. Unfortunately, they did not produce a 2020 vintage of this wine, but the 2019 was excellent. I've been on this list since about 2009. Back then, this wine was selling for an extremely modest $50 per bottle. While the price has trended upward and is now $75 or so, this is always one of the very best values in Napa Valley. The 2021 vintage in Napa Valley was also excellent, and so this is an excellent time for you to get on the Rivers Maria mailing list, so you'll be in position to get an allocation when that vintage comes out. Rivers Marie also makes some excellent single vineyard Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. That sells for more than $100 a bottle, but it's also an excellent relative value at their respective price points. The Howell Mountain AVA in Napa Valley has long been one of my favorites. To use the Howell Mountain AVA designation on a label, the fruit must come from vineyards that are located at 1,400 feet above sea level or higher. The reason for this distinction is that vineyards that are located above the 1,400 foot level are thought to be above the fog line and thus receive much greater sunshine than those which are located below the fog line. In addition, this higher altitude results in cooler temperatures. The result is very small, intensely concentrated berries with ample acidity and high tannic structure. Like Mayacamas, Dunn Vineyards is a producer of classic Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon and definitely one of my favorite producers in the Howell Mountain AVA. Dunn's first vintage was in 1979 and they're still making wine in very much the same style as when they were first founded. Dunn Vineyards is very much still a small family farm. In fact, when I pulled up to the winery, a friendly dog greeted me at my car. Founder Randy Dunn is still in charge of the vineyards, but his son Mike took over the winemaking duties a few years ago. Mike continues to make wine in very much the same way as his father. There's just one slight tweak that Mike made to the winemaking process, and that relates to the oak barrels that are used for the maturation. Whereas his father Randy tended to supply these oak barrels from just one producer, Mike uses about seven or eight producers of oak barrels to obtain the oak barrels that are used to mature the wines. Dunn produces not one, but two Napa Valley wines that I'm buying right now. The first of these wines is the Dunn Howell Mountain Cabernet Sauvignon. As the name suggests, the fruit for this wine comes exclusively from the Howell Mountain vineyards that are farmed by the Dunns. This wine is 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. After fermentation, it matures for 32 months in 100% new French oak, and then spends one more year in the bottle before it is released. The current vintage is the 2018, but I also had an opportunity to taste the outstanding 2019 vintage, which won't be released until October. The 2019 in particular is very highly regarded and received a very impressive score from a critic the day that I was tasting it. I very much enjoyed both the 2018 and the 2019 vintage and highly recommend both of them. This is a wine that typically sells for around $160 a bottle if you get it direct from the producer. This wine still has 13.9% alcohol, and the Dunn's use winemaking techniques that help to ensure that it will not exceed 14%. These wines were more approachable than I expected when I tasted them, but the Dunn's advise that they typically enjoy these wines with 10 to 15 years of age on them. So it's definitely a wine that you can put away in your cellar, and which will only continue to get better if you let it mature a little bit longer. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, 
please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level four diploma from the WSET. So I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. The second Napa Valley wine made by the Duns that I'm buying right now is the Dunn Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. While this wine also contains a very good portion of the Howell Mountain fruit that's produced by the Duns, they also include some valley floor fruit in this wine. Since about the 2013 vintage, this fruit has come from the Coombsville area. As a result of the inclusion of this valley fruit, this wine is a bit more approachable and has a softer tannic structure than the Howell Mountain Cabernet Sauvignon that's produced by the Duns. I had the opportunity to try the 2013 vintage when I was there, and it was extremely impressive. The Dun Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon is made in the exact same way as the Howell Mountain Cabernet Sauvignon. This one is also 100% Cabernet Sauvignon and undergoes the same maturation process. In terms of the price, however, this wine sells for much closer to $100, right around $105 or so for the current releases. And so this is definitely one that I would recommend, especially if you want a wine that you can enjoy a little bit sooner than the Howell Mountain Cabernet, and that sells for a bit lower price point than that wine. Chapelet is another one of the pioneering producers of wine in Napa Valley. Chapelet was one of the very first producers to make wine in the now famous Pritchard Hill area. Pritchard Hill has dry, rocky soils that are well suited to the production of high quality Cabernet Sauvignon. In addition, Chapelet practices green farming, or they crop thin, which helps to further concentrate the fruit. The result is Cabernet Sauvignon with impressive purity of fruit and concentration. Chapelet produces a number of excellent wines, but the top Napa Valley wine that I'm buying now that is produced by Chapelet is their signature Cabernet Sauvignon. This is always an excellent value, and it's one that sells for around $90 a bottle, but if you shop around, you could perhaps find it for about $80 or so. The next top Napa Valley wine that I'm buying now is the Russell Bevan Ontogeny. Russell Bevan is an outstanding producer of Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. Many of his top wines sell for $200 or more, but this Ontogeny is an outstanding value that sells for only about $100 a bottle. Ontogeny is a blend of fruit from a barrel selection of Russell Bevan's single vineyard wines. Ontogeny is a highly acclaimed wine virtually every vintage and one that routinely scores in the upper 90s. This is a wine that I tend to buy in volume and I like to enjoy one or two a year until my supply runs out. While it's extremely enjoyable on release, it does improve with a bit of age on it and I tend to find that the sweet spot is about five to seven years after the vintage. Owned and operated by brothers Alex and Graham, McDonald Vineyards makes one of the most highly coveted wines in all of Napa Valley, despite the fact that its first vintage was just in 2010. The McDonald family first planted vines in the legendary Tokolon Vineyard way back in 1954. Some of these prized old vines survive to this day and are among the oldest vines in all of Napa Valley. This is notable because many of the vines in Napa Valley had to be replanted in the 1980s or 90s due to a pervasive phylloxera outbreak during that time period. The prevailing wisdom in Napa Valley in the 1980s and 1990s was that the AXR1 rootstock was the best rootstock to use. Unfortunately, however, it turned out that this rootstock was not impervious to phylloxera as first believed. The McDonald vines, however, did not use AXR1 rootstock, but rather used St. George rootstock, which in fact turned out to be impervious to phylloxera. For 60 years, the fruit from the McDonald Vineyards was sold exclusively to Robert Mondavi and included in some of his finest wines. In 2010, however, the McDonald brothers set aside a portion of this fruit to bottle their own wine. Almost immediately, this wine was extremely well received and highly acclaimed and became one of the most sought after wines in all of Napa Valley. I recently had the opportunity to visit the McDonald estate, to walk the vineyard, see these impressive old vines up close and in person, and taste an example of the McDonald Cabernet Sauvignon. I've only had the opportunity to try some of these wines on a few occasions, but it's always been extremely impressive and memorable. One of the absolute most pure expressions of Cabernet Sauvignon from the Napa Valley floor.
The best and most cost-effective way to get the McDonald Cabernet Sauvignon is to get a place on the mailing list where you'll be offered the opportunity to purchase about three bottles of the wine for $195 each, at least in most vintages. Unfortunately, however, there's currently a long waiting list to get on this list, and so you may have to seek out these wines in the secondary market in the meantime. In the secondary market, these wines will sell for much more than $195, but nevertheless, if you are someone who's interested in getting some of the best wines in all of Napa Valley, I highly recommend picking up some of this wine if you get an opportunity to do so. For those who are interested in Napa Valley wine recommendations at the $50 price point, be sure to check out my 2020 Camus Wine Review video that's linked in the pinned comment below. In that video, I recommend three excellent Napa Valley wines at the $50 price point.